In honor of Groundhog's Day, Josh saw his shadow. That means we're back with more episodes. Woo! <laughs> saw him, Aaron. I'm the one who had a, a sinus tumor and was out. That's why we really didn't do one. Yeah, you're not dying, man. You're, no. It's all good, which I'm glad, because now I get to continue this I felt like adventure. fucking Arnold in Total Recall, where they were pulling that tracking device out of his nose. These were the visions I was having, so... I'm I, back. Better I, than ever. And I had to put up with your paranoia and fear of what the fuck is in my <laughs> head. And I don't know, man. It doesn't sound good. And I don't know. It's just weird. And I'm like, dude, it's a thing in your head. I don't know. Literally. But I, I am glad that you are here. Because to find a replacement, well, yeah, it would be easy. But it wouldn't be as fun. It so. would not be easy. No one else wants to work with you. Let's face it. No, I do have a list of people that have already emailed me and said... Your mom and dad don't count as a list. No, they don't even know how to use email. <laughs> okay. Um, but no, there is a list of people, so... Are people going to know who you are since you have yet to introduce yourself? They know by my voice, because I'm the one okay. with the professional voice. But I'm Josh. <laughs> we got so much to cover, because we have been gone for so long. Yeah, Wow. Quite frankly, there wasn't that much I really wanted to talk about during that period. There wasn't, but we could have still bullshit for a while. But this is going to be a marathon, man, I think. Yeah, so be prepared. prepared. (laughs) Wow. See how awesome we are. We can never get rid of the podcast because we now think alike. Fuck, I am so doomed. (laughs) So doomed. So let me get the business out of the way. We do have our interview with Mr. Dick Warlock, Michael Myers himself, that will be appearing very soon. So we've done something during our time off. We did. We did. And that was a fun interview, man. Yeah. It was cool. But so make sure make sure you don't miss that episode. Definitely follow us on Facebook, follow us on iTunes and any other podcast directory. Please, please give us five star reviews. Real easy. You just click it, hit five, done. Super easy. Stupid easy. Wherever you can. Even Josh can figure it out. I can. I would. I really could. Um, but wherever you can, leave us a review. Uh, check out the YouTube page that uh, we have up. Aaron does all his toy review videos up there. So leave us a review and five-star review, of course, there. Should yeah. have Predator and Terminator reviews this week. Nice. FYI. Good job. So let's jump into it, man, because there is a shitload to cover. Man. So I guess we'll start with trailers, right? That's kind of what we yeah, usually delve yeah, into. I like, I like that. So a couple of weeks ago, Spider-Man Far From Home appeared. Yep. Initial reactions. He's like Marvel. Don't give a fuck. No, I thought it was cool, man. It was a good trailer. Wow. I am shocked. I know. And I've been waiting for this. I've been waiting a month to fucking say something. I thought he'd be like typical this. Marvel. It was all right. It's the same as all the others. Blah, blah, blah. No, you know what? Like... I wasn't because honestly, that's kind of how I half felt about it. No, nah, you know what? It, Spider-Man, I went to like a little bit more open minded, I think. And I am sick of kind of like the other Marvel movies. But this one's got a little different feel to it. Even the first Spider-Man. What was that? Homecoming? Was that it? Yes. Whatever. Um, it wasn't like my favorite Marvel movie, but it was good. It was a different feel. And this trailer, it was funny. I dug it. I like the whole happy interaction with uh, Aunt May there, because I kind of wish I was happy. I kind of am happy because I'm, you know, like his build and everything. But uh, you just lack the millions of dollars, <laughs> the millions of dollars. But I can get the hot chick. Just but the so Patreon, you know. it's coming along, so we'll be there shortly. <laughs> I'm not that big either. And but. we also had a new idea at work all week where we will be YouTube YouTube sensations. Yeah, but so, <laughs> yeah, we're, that's all we're revealing. That's it. That's yeah. it for now. So you'll be happy soon enough. Yeah. Um. But no, I thought it was a cool trailer. I uh, like Mysterio. Yeah, yeah a little, so... A little different. They kind of make it like Mysterio's going to be a good guy, which he's clearly not. Yeah, that was the thing. I I rewatched it again, and I was like, he's like, kind of did give off that vibe. Well, what's up with that? So everyone was saying the Elementals were going to be in this movie, which was like Molten Man and Hydro Man and all these people, you know, yeah. four elements of the movie. And they make it like... Mysterio is going to come and kind of save the day for Spider-Man. But really, these are his illusions, is my prediction. 
right. so that's what's going to draw Spider-Man into him, and he's just going to mind fuck Spider-Man the whole time. And what does he say in the trailer? It's like, you want no part of this. I think it's what he says. It's like, you want no part of this. But he says it in like a weird way. You're kind of like, I'll handle it for you. You don't want to get hurt doing this kid. And so is he kind of like creating this to be the hero himself and that backfires and everybody finds out he's a villain? Could be. Jake Gyllenhaal, though, I thought he looked the part. I mean, he looks straight out of the costume was fine. Yeah. Looks like Mysterio. So that's really all there was to take away from that. Yeah. It wasn't groundbreaking by any means, but... I had no problem with it. It was interesting, though, that he didn't know who um, Nick Fury was. Yeah. So how does this take place after Avengers? We're obviously going to wait and see, but well, I guess weird. there's all these fan theories out there, too, of the time travel and everything, the Avengers shit. So is this really after? That's true. Endgame? We don't know. Is it before? Is it does everything get erased? Who knows? Who cares? We'll find out. So what you got next, man? Well, that was the good part of comic book trailers. Now let's get to the bad part. Wait, you just said you didn't even really like that trailer much. No, it was it was good, but it was just typical Marvel. But typical Marvel is good. That's, that means it's average. So we'll go with this. We got typical DC, Birds of Prey, a.k.a. Birds of Shit. Yep, you hated it. It's awful, dude. Everyone online is ripping it. Everybody is ripping it. And I was reading, like, I don't know, man. I think people just need to chill the fuck out. Seriously. Yeah, the room looked like crap. It's a bunch of, what, like, sheets in the fucking gymnasium somewhere. Like that's It what was it, shot on my grandma's camcorder that you put the fucking VHS on the side and held it on your shoulder. Maybe that's what they wanted, some weird retro kind of look thing. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. It, there's a lot wrong with it. It failed. It's awful. People were like, it looked like those amateur people on Pornhub playing as Harley Quinn. Like this was some fucking erotic video. It's bad. Yeah, nobody has a problem with the way that Margot Robbie looks as Harley Quinn at all. Or do they now have a problem because it's not the look? It's just the way it's shot, and it is bad. It really is terrible. I think that this is what a teaser teaser is like it showed you nothing but who the characters are and that's fine with me i do kind of wish it was done a little bit better it because it did it looked like sheets were hung up in a fucking high school gymnasium and they're just walking around in it I, yeah it's not that part i didn't like but as far as teasing what's going on i don't care that there was no plot tease it just was the sole purpose of it was to introduce the characters by look kind of and quickly say hey these are who's going to be in it i have no problem with that part i i don't don't know it's not going to be good i have zero faith in this movie you are basing this on 15 fucking seconds because you are going to hate this movie i can tell right now and if you do like the movie i'll give you a dollar do you understand teasers are supposed to get people excited, not disappointed in a film? The teaser should be like the best thing to come out. You should be a holy fuck. I can't wait to see the real trailer. And it did the exact opposite of that. I could honestly care either way if it came out or not. Maybe exactly, they, because it was a no, bad no, trailer. No, not, not, if it that's was not good, what you'd I be meant. Excited. That's not what I meant. That's what he said, folks. That's not what I meant, though. Okay? I just go by what you said. No, shut up. So, <laughs> <laughs> Look. The purpose was to introduce characters. If you're not Who we already have known. You showed Harley Quinn. You showed Harley Quinn. You showed the Huntress, the Black Canary, Cassandra Cain. Possibly what? Renee Montoya? The Black Mask? The fucking... Victor Zaz? That that montage you you showed? That montage was so fast. Like, all those characters were shown in one second. But people know who the characters are. You, I couldn't even tell who they were until you slow down and watch it frame by frame and had to go to fucking comicbook.com to see who was actually in hey, it. Hey, that's what I, I I didn't know who all was in it. I was like, who the fuck is that? But hey, oh, okay. All right, interesting. Now I'm more interested. Yeah, but. Man, you are a fanboy. No, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying it was great. I, did I say that it was good? No, I didn't say it was good. I said I liked that it introduced the characters and gave more of a mystery to them because like, oh, really? Blah, blah, blah. All right, fine. Let's see what the next trailer is. Base your shit on the next real trailer. That's why I hate teasers anyway. Half of them are fucking garbage anyway. Yeah, those half are all made by DC. <laughs> all right, moving on. Horror trailers, baby. So that's what we really like. Yeah, Pet Cemetery came out. 
the new the second trailer. This has a lot of controversy in the horror Ooh, it world. It does. It does. And now this is one the controversy I could give a shit about. I could care less. I, I thought the trailer was fine. So, I mean, it gives out a major spoiler of the movie. We find out that Gage from the first movie is not going to be the boy to come back, the child to come back and, you know, be possessed. It's going to be Ellie, the daughter. Right. The older daughter. Who cares? Apparently, everybody's bitching about this. They are. And what I want to know is, like, how invested are you in the original Pet Cemetery movie that you were this upset about it? Like, it was a cool movie. I liked it when I was a kid. I watched it multiple times on HBO when it came out and everything. It just doesn't have, like, the Texas Chainsaw, you know, grip on my life. It's just a movie. But people are up in arms about this. Like, you ripped off their arm. Like, you kidnapped their kid. You killed their kid. I don't get it. To me, it's the same story. So you're, they're like, oh, you just change it for the sake of changing it. Well, you have to change something. If you didn't change it, why are we getting a remake? I'll just yeah. watch the original movie. Yeah, shot for shot. So, of course, you need to change something. And the fact that a two-year-old, I'm sorry, if you have a two-year-old, I can punt it across the room. I'm not going to be afraid of it. I mean, an eight-year-old girl is not much more terrifying, but at least they have but, some mind capacity to like try to trick you or stalk you in your sleep, something. They have a little more power than a two-year-old. See, and I thought that they changed it by changing it. It wasn't, like you said, people do change things for the sake of changing it. I don't think this was done for the sake of changing it. I think thought went into this, and what the directors and producers said was, we did think about this, and I agree with them that the girl, to me, is creepier than, like you said, a two- or three-year-old boy walking around killing things. At that point, it's just a fucking doll, you know? And that's what they said. They wanted the child to actually act. You can't have a two-year-old actually no. act. And if you watch the first movie, it's like dolls. It's pretty bad. Yeah, it's all, all like shots of an arm or, you know, it's you don't get the child acting. Right. And it is creepy, man. There is something about an eight or ten year old girl with long hair, kind of sunken eyes, and it, it's creepy, man. That shit creeps me the fuck out. But is I, it too I much like, like The Ring? I don't know. No, I, I don't understand if there's if there's comparison between those two. I don't get that at all. Me neither. But people are saying it. I, it sounds to me people just need a reason to gripe. Honestly, yeah, so I, like, I don't have a problem with the trailer. My wife's a pretty big fan of Pet Cemetery. She was like, who who cares? What does it matter? And I was like, all right, just taking your opinion because she's a bigger fan of it than I am. Yeah. So and, she's not outraged. And I like, too, like the whole, like those kids walking in the woods and having that parade. Like that just adds to the creep factor. So if it wasn't the daughter that was killed and it was the boy, like all those kids walking in the woods were eight to ten years old you know just doesn't fit man i like what the i like the direction they're going in it hopefully it's it comes out well and the good news is the cat is supposed to be all practical there's no yeah I special effects or animatronic cat that is crazy so you can get a cat to act but not a two-year-old child <laughs> <laughs> so are animals better than kids <laughs> <laughs> so anyway moving along in the horror world Child's Play trailer came out. And another remake. Another remake, reboot, reboot whatever you want to call it. I liked it. I, I liked it a lot. I did too, man. Wow. What are we doing agreeing, <laughs> man? What, what, what's good? We're going to have to be functional now. Uh, no, I thought it was cool, man. Did you watch the, the teaser trailer for this? Now, that's a teaser trailer that was very well done. For the child's play. Yes. There's the one that came out, right? So, well, there was a Caslin Corporation yeah. commercial, which basically it's a guy giving like um, a business seminar. Or he's trying to sell his product. He's like, this is Caslin Corporation. Very much like Resident Evil Umbrella Corporation right, right. type vibe. But it's like it tells you what they are, how they're making these dolls, and why. But it didn't actually like show any of the movie. I thought that was just very well done. But the trailer itself, I, I thought it looked great. Oh, yeah. And and talk about updating for modern times. They they did a good job on that. Yeah, so this is like AI technology that went awry. We're not going to have the possession aspect of it anymore. Right, and it's been done, you yeah, know. Right. So, 
and same but different. Yes, thank you. That's what we need. Now, is it that multiple dolls are wreaking havoc, or is it just the one? I, I got think the it's feeling, just the one. So I had a feeling it might have been multiple, which would be kind of cool too. Or that could even open it up to the another movie. But if there were multiples of these things going awry, it would be kind of cool too, man. And everyone was worried that is his name going to be Chucky or not? And it is. It's Chucky. Yeah. But there's no voice of Chucky yet. I find that very weird. No one's been cast. Mm. We have no idea. We know it's not Brad Dorif. But other than that, I have no idea. We'll see. We'll see. I think it, I thought it was cool though, man. And what Aubrey Plaza plays the mom, which yeah. I was like, we're both on a Parks and Rec kick, so yeah. And I just got done watching the whole thing, and I'm like, how is she going to be in Child's Play? I'm like, she's so young looking, but by the time you go through Parks and Rec, and then you realize it's a couple years after even Parks and Rec ends, she looks old enough to be a mom and have a ten year old kid or an eight year old kid, and. I think it works. I'm still hesitant in her role. I I don't know. I can't picture her having a child and not be, and being serious. Like she's always <laughs> deadpan, but yeah, yeah that, I can't see is... her being dramatic. I guess. Like I just see oh. her Parks and Rec character. Be so like, do you think this is the a drama Chucky's movie? killing? Cool. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I just. <laughs> But I'm just saying, yeah, but that's something her character would have liked, so. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I just was like. Cool, let him kill. Yeah, <laughs> awesome. My hero. Can I lick the knife? Like, I don't. <laughs> it'll be interesting, you know. I'm not going to, like, rip it cause for that. But no, I just, no, right no, now, no, I can't no. really see it. But I'm excited for it. Yeah, I, I, and um, talk about controversy from Pet Cemetery, uh Jennifer Tilly apparently does not like what they're doing with Chucky in this movie to the point where she had to treat tweet out a picture of her with the doll of her in the movie as the bride saying, not my Chucky. And I say, thank God. Yeah. Like, does anyone want this to be compared to bride and cult of Chucky and seed of Chucky? Seriously. And it update it. What do you want? The same doll that's outdated. It's outdated. It's good for 1988. It's not good for 2019. Uh, and the other part was Don Mancini doesn't approve of it either as the creator of it. I'm like, whatever, dude. You know, you got your TV show. Yeah, they're going to work do a with TV that. Show. And I guess, but there's two different studios. MGM has the movie rights. Universal has this kind of right. There's this, there's that. Who cares? Dude, you got your TV show. If you want to stick with what you've done for the last 20, 30 years, fine. Do the same thing over and over and over. And we'll I'll see watch how them well both. You're th- I'll watch them both. They run along in parallel universes. It's yeah, fine. But we'll see what does better then. I guess that's the ultimate test. Oh, the, the theory, uh, theatrical version will do much better. Well, I th- uh, Absolutely. So sticking with horror, not so much a trailer, but I did read that The Boy 2 started production January 28th. I was a big fan of the first one. Um, I thought Lauren Cohan was good in it. I thought it was a cool take on it. But uh, Katie Holmes is actually going to star in The Boy 2. Huh, that's interesting. So is it same concept, I guess? I I guess. They didn't give out too too much details on it, but I just found that interesting. Like I said, I like the first one, so I'll definitely check out the second one. Yeah, the first one was all right. I used to date Katie Holmes back on the Dawson's days, you know? Back on the creek. You mean you dated the poster of her? Who didn't? I don't know. I was a little bit too old. Yeah, you're too old for that. But a little too old. But Joey you know. Potter, you have a place in my heart. <laughs> now, a, a while back ago, we said that we would. Since we're talking about remakes, reboots, and shit, I watched. Finally, got the chance because it wasn't in a theater anywhere around us to watch the remake of Suspiria which I've been trying to get this fool to watch the original, but he refuses. Don't take your lessons on remakes and reboots from Suspiria. That's all I'm going to say. That good? Uh, The original was groundbreaking. It had really cool music. The, The visuals were great. The blood was great. This, talk about boring. Wow. It just, and a movie that tried too hard. That was a thing. It tried too hard. Now, was it shot for shot? No. 
no. Did you even shopping. know you had were watching like the same type of movie other than you it knew, was a ballet? You knew it was the same type, absolutely, because it had a whole witch aspect. Um, it had the the girl that tries to get away, um, the new girl that comes into the dance company. You know, figures out that they are witches. There's kind of twists in there that didn't happen in the first one. I will say that the gore aspect of it was pretty cool. There was some crazy freaky shit, really bizarre that I liked, but it took too long to get there. And some of that was even done for the sake of doing it. It was like, Oh, we got to do it and make it weird. Weird is hard to do. And this was just tried too hard. Really did. So did they at least take whatever classic parts would be of the original and do those shot for shot? Like that I want in a remake. You have to take the most iconic thing and redo it. Not really. No. No. There's an a there's a really awesome scene the beginning of the first one, towards the beginning, of how this how someone dies. And it's just like oh, it's bizarre. it's really cool. Not done. Not done at all. They took that character and reserved her for the rest of the movie and bring her in towards the end. That's not the way it, it had zero effect. It wasn't as um, shocking as the original and what happened. So it, the only thing that stayed the same, it's a ballet company run by witches. That's hmm. it. I did want to see this when I was in theaters. Well, it only played in like one theater that was a hundred miles away, but yeah. that's the reason we didn't see it. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm kind of glad I didn't, I guess. I kind of was like, let's go take a road trip down to Philly and watch it. It'd be kind of cool. <laughs> Dude, I would not drive five fucking minutes. <laughs> I can't believe that I was like, oh, it's coming out on Blu-ray. Yes. And it's an Amazon movie. I'm like, maybe I'll just wait for it to come on Prime. I'm like, I have to watch this. I like the original so much that I need to... Watch this one. Oh, I wish I waited for Prime, man. I wasted 18 fucking dollars. It's an expensive coaster. It is, you know. But. So what would you rate it? Oh. Uh, far and a half. Five, five. I'll give it a five because I like the gore. What? It was it. better than Halloween then in your book? Um. Yes. Okay. I gave Halloween a four, didn't I? I think we gave it three. Was it a three? <laughs> Make this a four then. <laughs> I, I have to downgrade this then because I, I realize now what I gave that one. Yeah, it's a four. Because I did like that I tried to be a little bit different, but it was too different. And when you're remaking something, don't remake it in the same fucking year that the original movie's in. That, that's what's cool about that Child's Play. That is kind of stupid, I agree. Child's Play is going to happen now. It's not going to happen in 1988. This was a dance German dance studio in the fucking 70s. Great. Yeah, like, what's the point of that? Yeah, I had no tie to that. Ugh. Was Miami Vice's daughter at least hot in the movie? Oh, yeah. Yeah? She dances exquisitely. Right, and well, there's, you know, plenty there's something. of... something. There's plenty of nudity in there. Um, there are some cool scenes, like I said, but... If I could take all those cool scenes and edit them out, it would be cool. Everything else, new. Did you do Fifty Shades of Josh while watching this movie? No. No, it wasn't that hot. I did uh, Fifty Ways to Stay Awake. Uh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> What's right. up next, man? So I, I have to hit on Hobbs and Shaw. This oh. has nothing to do with what we typically talk about. But we are fans of Fast and Furious. I do. I love Fast and Furious. They're like such guilty pleasures. They are. They are. Mm. But, and the things that I make fun of Fast and Furious about, like The Rock moving a fucking torpedo with his bare hands and throwing it into the air. and Oh, that gets me so hot when he does it. Vin Diesel stomps his foot and collapses an entire bridge. Yes. This trailer made me realize why they're able to do this. I did not know they lived in a superhero world. Where they're all superheroes, apparently. So the fucking villain of this so-called real-world scenario in Fast and Furious world takes some kind of serum to have superpowers? How uh, fucking stupid. I don't know, man. What, what's the point of this? I, words can't come out of my mouth. 
I thought Hobbs and Shaw, when they described it, it was them going to be in prison and the interactions of all this shit, and we're going to have like a Tango and Cash yeah, type I movie. Yeah, I thought it was a Tango and Cash remake. And they're not in prison at all. They're going around chasing this super villain that has superpowers. I, I just don't understand. And the bad jokes and shit that were shown, I just... I will not watch this. I will not go. But my main question and reason for bringing it up is, is the superhero thing so fucking far gone? Like, we have to put superheroes into everything, even though it's not a superhero movie. Ooh. Usually, though, when this stuff, I would, I, I hate that that happened. So I think it sucks. Like, they jumped and the it, shark. Yeah. <laughs> when they start doing things like this in movies, it kills the other genre. Exactly. So, and I've, you know, I've been waiting for this bubble to burst. The bubble's starting to leak, man. The balloon is leaking on the superhero genre. So, you know, like your superhero movies now, because just like Westerns went out of style, these are going. They're on their way. This is foreshadowing. 100%. Yeah, I I don't know what they're thinking. Did that answer your question? I yeah, yeah. I, I think we're I think was. we're agreed that it's it's going too far. Yeah, you don't have is. to put superheroes into every movie. An action movie doesn't have to be a superhero movie, and I think that's what they thought. It's like, right. well, all these action movies have superheroes. We're an action movie. Let's just throw it in here. It'll work. No, it doesn't. No, and the part of the thing about like a good action movie is that the hero of the movie, it's like the non-powered superhero anyway. You don't need to throw in serums and you know bionic arms and whatever else might come about you know this ain't fucking bane all right (laughs) (laughs) yeah too far so that brings me to the movie that i saw without you and it's a little old why didn't i see the movie aaron because you're not a real fan no 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 no. yeah that's what it boils down to what movie you want to talk about so glass, glass, okay, and basically, go ahead. This is a movie that's not in the superhero world per se, but it is about superheroes. But it's a drama, and this one was actually pretty well done. So I wh- wouldn't know. Yeah, and because you're not a real fan. No, okay. So what what happened was I saw Unbreakable when that movie came out. Well, I, I don't even know how many years ago it was. Right, I didn't see Split for whatever reason. And I said to my dear friend here, hey, you got the movie? He's like, yeah, I didn't see Split either. I got it on Blu-ray. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to rewatch Unbreakable. You know, be, prep myself for the movie. I was like, oh, hey, when you're done with Unbreakable and Split, can you bring them in for me to work so I can watch them? Sure. No problem. That'd be great. Then we can talk about Glass on the podcast. All right, I will go see it. I'll go see it opening weekend. Whatever. Week goes by. Yo, dude, you going to bring those movies in? Oh, yeah, I forgot. Dude, I'm going to text you tonight. Bring the fucking movies in. Dude, don't forget the movies. He forgets the movies. <laughs> Another week goes by. I think I texted you a couple times. Bring Who the movies in. Text? Bring the <laughs> you don't. Bring the movies in. Bring the movies in. Hey, you gonna bring the movie in tomorrow? Yo, the movie's coming out this weekend. If you bring it in on Thursday morning, I will watch one Thursday, one Friday, and go see the movie over the weekend. We could do up you could talk about it on the podcast, which probably is another reason why we didn't do a podcast a while back ago, because <laughs> we could have talked about that movie and gave you a review, but someone did not bring the fucking movies in. So in order not to beat a dead horse, it's not 100% my fault because waiting on my dear friend to bring the movies in and he let me down. This is also the same guy that's like, why do you buy movies? It's a waste of time. Download everything. It's so easy. Then fucking download them if it's my fault. No, the thing was, you said you're going to do something and you failed. Just like I fail on <laughs> so many things and like procrastinate on shit, you're, you're no better than me. That hurts. That, <laughs> Good. It fucking should. That's the biggest insult I've ever received you on the podcast. You are just like me. <laughs> oh, my God. Stick the knife in. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to talk about Glass, like Josh talked about, Suspiria, do like a quasi-review of it. Um, it's obviously a sweet sequel to Unbreakable and Split. With Unbreakable, you got Bruce Willis, who's a guy. He's 
you know, that super strength per se. He can never get hurt. He doesn't get sick. And then you have the villain, Mr. Glass. He's the guy super into comic books. He thinks the real world is basically a comic book itself. And then you got Split, which is James McAvoy. And he's got 101 different personalities. One of them happens to be the Beast, which he has super strength. He has animal characteristics. He, like, runs on all fours and shit like that. Climbs walls. And basically the premise of this movie is they all get put together into a psych ward. And there's a job of Sarah Paulson, who she plays this chick who's part of like an Illuminati group or something. She has a three-leaf clover tattoo on her hand, and there's a bunch of them. And their job is to protect these type of people from getting into the real world and getting known. So apparently this has been going on for a long time. There really are superheroes or people with super extraordinary Uh, circumstances. It's a cool concept. And their jobs are like, find these people and eliminate them. So that they don't get into the main populace. It was kind of like X Men. A little bit, yeah. It does steal definitely Especially those the whole beast thing. Those thoughts of it of yeah, you know, discrimination. Like even if they're better than us, let's you know not worry about them. So she does a good job of trying to make these three think they're just crazy. So like everything that happens in those other movies, she finds a way to explain it. Where the train crash, you didn't get hurt. It was because of this. You can climb walls because subconsciously you watched um, rock climbing and you were able to study the moves and do it. So she has an explanation for everything. Right. So they start to buy into, yeah, we are just nuts. All these things just happen by coincidence or pure luck, you know. But then they they do find out um, Mr. Glass, Samuel L. Jackson, plays a character where he's going to bomb a building in Philadelphia. And his whole thing is he wants to get Unbreakable and Split together the fight so that the whole world can see it and everyone will know there are people that are superheroes. So he's kind of like the mastermind villain of the movie. So he's like Magneto. Yes. So he gets these people to fight and he makes them believe through his um, manipulations that they do have power. Right. So now you got Bruce Willis, James McAvoy, they're believing it. They break out of the institute and they put on this fight, you know, at, at outside the asylum, and everybody sees it. But Sarah Paulson thinks she can keep this under wraps because this was supposed to take place at the bombing in Philadelphia, and she knew that he was trying to break them out. So what she did was install cameras everywhere, and no matter where he moved, he was on camera. And this was part of his master plan because he knew if there was cameras, people would see it. So once they break out, he steals the feed. The feed goes viral to everybody, and that's kind of how the movie ends is all of them die. Glass dies, Unbreakable dies, Split. They're all dead. And But then it ends with the movie where they're kids. Um, you have Mr. Glass's mom, Unbreakable's son, who kind of helps him. He's like the ear. You know, he kind of hears like the um, police reports and stuff, tells his dad where to go to beat up people. And that's how he finds where Split is because they're trying to find these missing girls. So he investigates where the girls are at, finds them. Um, And then Split is the girl who he held captive in the first movie. She actually has some kind of thing for him in this movie because she was molested in Split. And he makes her realize like that wasn't okay. And she reports her uncle who molested her. So it kind of actually bettered her life that she was held Damn. captive. So at the end of the movie, it's those three are together and they're like, look, all the people that we cared about accomplished. This is now out. It was pretty good, man. Um, and it comes full circle. Yeah. The so whole it's a, thing it's comes a true full trilogy. Circle. Yeah. I think yeah. it's done. I mean, you technically could probably do another movie if you Man. really had to and be like, well, now this guy has powers and uh, please don't do not start a whole universe. I'm tired of universes, but it, it is interesting. It's like, it makes you think like people that do have extraordinary things. Are they, who knows, man, semi touch with, you know, I don't know. But are there really, it just takes it to the, to the 10th degree, obviously sure. of what, yeah. what happens in real life. Uh, but it was a superhero movie without being a superhero movie. The way they fight, it's it was more normal. Right? What you wanted. I mean, the guy's a psy- psychotic killer, and you get to see that portray out. He actually kills people. It's not like you just have that superhero fight and a guy gets thrown and then he 
stands up and runs away up against this crashes into that they punch each other 20 million times and they're not hurt there's actually (laughs) repercussions in this movie which was nice to see because they tried to keep it real life based i'd give it like a six and a half or seven all right so worth watching but not the greatest thing if you liked the other movies there's no way you won't like this. well yeah it's the exact same as those but it's not redundant you know it's a new story but it's the exact same philosophy it's the same pacing so, overall, between the three movies, they all intertwine well. And they well, all, yeah. You know. I, if I was to rank them in order, I would. I like Split better. I think McAvoy just does an amazing job. And in this movie, it's cool to see him play, like, three characters in one sentence. The way he can just turn it off. He's yeah. a little boy, then he's a girl, and then he's the beast in a one sentence. Huh. That's cool. It's unbelievable. So, I, I like do like Split better. I'd put this one second, Unbreakable last. And tidbit of information is that Glass was filmed... In the Lehigh Valley, in Allentown, where we're at, we are podcasting from. So pretty cool. And shout out to my buddy Brownie. His local comic shop is filmed in the movie, and he bought me one of the comics that's on the wall in the movie. So it's a Daredevil issue, and it says on it, you know, as appeared in Glass. So it's just cool. It's like a prop replica. It's not worth anything, but it's just cool to have. Like, yeah, I got that that actual comic on the wall in that shot. I have it. Just kind of neat. So thanks, Brownie. Cool. Awesome. Um, Last bit of movie news, whatever you have it. Did you see Reborn is going to be on Netflix? No. Do you have any idea what Reborn is? What are you talking about? Oh, my God. This guy, fake comic fan. What are you talking about? So Reborn is um, a comic by Image. So it's maybe out like three years ago. It's a Greg Capullo uh, Mark Just Millar world. Capullo is one of my favorite artists, so that's why I checked it out. But it's a world where you die and you're reborn in a world where you have to like fight to survive. Um, it's futuristic and kind of medieval at the same time. So you're in the future, but they have dragons and it's kind of like Sir Lancelot shit, but still. So you're going to hate it because there's dragons in it. If they put dragons in it, sure, probably. But you're going to try it. I'm going to try it. Like I said, I'm a big Capullo fan and. It actually has Sandra Bullock is going to be, I don't know if she's going to be cast as the main, but she is a producer of it along with the producer of It, the new movie. Hmm. Um, so this is kind of following up on Bird Box. That's why we think she's going to like co-produce plus star in it. And if that's the case, it's probably going to be a monster hit. And is it a movie or a series? A movie, as far as we know. Huh. It's only a six-issue comic, so it's pretty easy to put into a movie. So... I guess ne- what Netflix last week put out Polar, which was what a graphic novel. I have no idea. Um, not sure exactly. I never read it, but it's about a hitman who retires. He's out in the woods somewhere, but as all hitmen never really truly retire. I don't think there's always going to be someone out there trying to get you um, revenge or whatever. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly of the whole story, but they're doing a lot of these adaptations. Um, it seems. You know, they got a, what, The Witcher coming up, too. Uh, you have this Reborn. You got Polar. Amazon's doing, uh, what are they doing, that Kirkman thing? I forget what show, what show they're doing with that. But anyway, it's pretty cool. You're going to see a lot of ad- adaptations of maybe lesser known, you know, books. Maybe this is the new direction for comic book movies of sorts. Yeah, bring, and it I just, on, bring it on, I say. I just wanted to bring it up because spec-wise, um, the book started really taking off when they announced this. The regular issue, number one, it's still cheap. It's like 10 to $15, maybe 20 bucks. But the book to look out for, there was a Todd McFarlane, one of 25 variant. McFarlane sells no matter what. And then you got a movie mm-hmm. hype on top of it. It's the book to find. So right now I'd say they're going for like 50 to 100 depending on grade. But if you find one for, you know, maybe 40 bucks or so, I'd hop on it. I think once this gets out, it's going to double. This is a Netflix movie that is boosting comic book sales. Oh, yeah, How crazy goes. is that, though? Like, it just that's just what still blows my mind about comic books and how people are just, I don't know. I think Personally, I think y'all are suckers. But... Just because something was in something doesn't mean it's worth something, but apparently it fucking does. It I does. will never fucking comprehend it. I know I just dropped a lot <laughs> of F-bombs there, but that is just... 
Oh, it was in the Netflix movie. It was on an AMC show. It was on this. It was on that. It's got to be good. Still, nobody cared about Rocket Raccoon before. I still don't give a crap about his comic. So keeping with the uh, comic book adaptations, graphic novel, you know, turn into a movie, whatever. God Talk, Walking Dead, man. Coming back from their mid-season hiatus, right? The break. I'm excited. I am too, man. I am. And uh, I think... uh, they're going in a better direction, honestly. And hopefully, as Nicotero said, they get back to that horror element of shit and not the drama. But it's, I don't understand his statements because he was on Talking Dead and he made such a fuss about we wanted this to be like a Western and an old style and we're finally doing it. This is the show I always wanted. And then I guess that was boring. And he goes, oh, we're back to horror. That's what we've always wanted to do. Back to the horror <laughs> element. Like, I know he's got to spin the show, but come yeah, sure. On. Yeah, like, he's, I'm not an idiot. He has to support his boss, right? You know, and, and, you know, people that sign his checks. But this is the way to go, man. It started off as good horror, intellectual horror. Get back to it. And, you know, the scene where Jesus gets killed, I mean, that whole graveyard scene, kind of little. Maybe an homage to the graveyard scene in Night of the Living Dead. You That's got zom- what they're saying. Yeah. Zombies in the graveyard. I think it's a little far stretched, but just because you have zombies in a graveyard, well, I don't know. Maybe it's Return of the Living Dead too. I don't know. But uh, um, get back to the horror. I, uh, hopefully, that's in the direction they're going. And with the whispers, man, they're fucking brutal. So it's going to be something they have never seen before. It's a whole new terror for them, you know. Uh, but I think the other terror is them losing actors off the show, man. Yeah, so you're saying Michonne's most likely gone. Yeah, that's the rumor started earlier in the week that um, she might be moving on and looking towards movie roles. You know, she's a playwright herself, writes her own plays and books or stories and stuff. You know, multi-talented person. Um and then it came out uh, at the end of the week that don't expect her to be uh, a member of the cast at the end of next season. So interspersed, I think, through season 10 and written off. But written off now in a way, rumors are flying that opens up the possibility of her to get into the movies with Rick and meet up with Rick. So... Again, we have a problem with all these people always finding each other and meeting up. Can we really do that where Rick is in such a weird place that he can't make it back, but now we're supposed to believe Michonne also can get there? Or does she get her own little show of her in search of? And then the other thing, too, was with Maggie gone, Lauren Cohen gone, her show, what, Whiskey Cavalier debuts in a week or two on ABC. I think her career on, on Walking Dead... Depends on how good this is going to be, but it's already getting good reviews. I think people are into it for some reason. I haven't seen the trailer or anything for it. I see the commercial spots, but yeah, it I, looks like every other, you know. I haven't seen it. So. ABC, CBS show. Yeah, I don't watch cookie normal shit. TV, so I haven't seen it. But now there's even more rumor of her getting her own spinoff show. So it'd be her with Georgie some. It, 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 I, too much. It is too much. Does everything have to have a universe? No. And is The Walking Dead trying to build upon what you said DC is already too late on? The Walking Dead, if they try it, you're too late, man. You're too late with the universe thing. People are going to get tired of it. Just, just make one really good show. That's, yeah. The Walking right. Dead, not fear The Walking Dead. Walking Dead is better, but they're both good. But yeah, just make one show. I I don't need all this spinoff stuff. No, you don't need it. People meeting up. <laughs> oh, well, we'll just write them off the show and have them meet up down the road. Great. If you're the if you're the AMC, I don't just don't get why they cater to these actors. It's like, do you want off the show or not? If you're off, you're off. That's it. It's like every other show. You're off. We're done with you. I'm not going to leave it open ended, and hopefully you can come back because we're second best. We're sloppy seconds. Fuck that, man. You don't want to do it. You don't want to do it. Fine. Cool. Move on. So, I mean, Michelle came, Michonne came in end of, what, season two, beginning of season three. Uh, who's left? Daryl and Carol. That's it. That's it. And nobody, I don't think, 
nobody really thought they would be surviving the longest out of all of them. You kill off people that are still alive in the books, yet keep the guy who's not in the fucking book. And Carol was the weakest character, you know, from the get-go, the, the battered wife mm-hmm. syndrome and all yeah. that. She was the weakest. You'd think she would have been one of the first to go. Which it is cool to see her character develop as much as it yeah. has. I mean, I, I, I like Carol. Yeah, so. Her no complaint awesome. that she's alive, but it is just surprising at this point. Yeah. So, we'll see how, you know, Walking Dead ends up. We're not going to talk about it every week. But no, yeah. We'll, every couple we'll episodes, Every couple episodes, we'll get into it because... I am really interested to see on the new episode how it comes about. If they drag this shit out, though, oh, I don't know if I can handle it. The other zombie news I saw, uh, Zack Snyder is going to do a movie for Netflix. And Mm. he did the remake of Dawn of the Dead, which I think is one of the best zombie movies of all time. I think it is awesome. And he said he didn't really have that much creative control in that to do what he really wanted to do. And he promised this movie is going to be balls to the wall. So just expect total chaos, gore, fast-paced action. I don't know. It it looks awesome, or it sounds awesome. It does sound cool. And there's uh, another zombie show on Netflix. Um, If you like The Train to Busan, which I've... It's on my list. I got to watch it. They say it's, it's a Korean movie. Korean zombie movie, they say, is off the charts, fantastic. There's a Netflix zombie show called The Kingdom that says that's uh, it's like feudal Korea. So there's all samurai swords and shit like that, which I know you're not going to watch it. No, I hate that. They said it is everything The Walking Dead should be as far as story is concerned. And, you know, I'm just like, okay, now you piqued my interest because anything that says it's what that show should have been, or should it end up being? I got to check out. I got to compare it. So I'll check it out. This guy won't because there's swords in it. <laughs> Yet you like Michonne. So it's just a bunch of Michonne. So you should give it a shot. I don't like it that much. So I have 12 of her. And... Yeah, all right. So anyway. Zombie, zombie, zombie. There you go. Meant but, nothing before. So, you know, you're going talking about comic books here. And... Comic sales are actually down 6% from just last year. So here we have all wow. these hot shot properties. Everything's getting turned into a movie, TV show, whatever. You got Deadly Class started, all this stuff. And here comic sales are down. Does that make any sense? Maybe people, well, if you look at the main audiences of some of these movies, they don't care about comic books. They just want to see the movies. Why would you read a book when you can just watch a two and a half an hour movie, right? Two hour movie. I just don't get like the marketing aspect of it to me is like, I liked the movie. I can find out a whole nother adventure that wasn't told in this movie by reading a book for three bucks. Let me pick it up. Well, and I think you, in the recent past, you had a lot of, you know, even going to our, our shop, new movie comes out. I'm usually there now here. Oh yeah. Black Panther's selling well now, you know? Oh, Guardians is selling good. You know, they're redoing this. They're, they're buying this. Kids are coming in with their mom and dad. Mom and dad don't know. They don't collect, but they're like, Oh, little Johnny wants to read, you know, Black Panther. That did happen. But where do you really see the marketing by Marvel saying, love the movie, go buy the book. I haven't seen that. Have you? They at least do photo variants of the movie on the book. Yeah, but if New you're not already if, Marvel if you're out. not already collecting, you would never know that. That's what I'm saying. There is no commercials out there. There's no print ads out there saying, you know, even at the end of a trailer, love the movie, go buy the book. You don't hear that. You're still stuck in that collector realm, you know? So maybe they need to get into like Target or something and put, you know, a comic book pack next to the f- action figures you go and johnny wants a little action figure oh there's a book let me get the book too now once you have a book you're like you know there's more out there that's when you call your comic shop yeah and what's the what's walmart doing with those dc books they're like five bucks yeah they have the 100 page giants yeah. um there was one actually it just did hit target which was the dc savage world as a target exclusive it's a he-man take on the dc universe essentially Mm-hmm. They're selling out, so Man. I mean, people are buying them there, but they're ten bucks. Well, I don't know how many parents are just like, "Here's ten bucks to waste." 
Uh, well, parents are still buying their kids those wimpy kid books. They're fucking ten dollars. But that's a book. It's a book. Yeah, but you ever see the print in them? Wait till your kid starts reading those. It's still man. a book that parents probably are like, well, he's reading. I don't think they think of comic books they, as no, a kid No, it still reading. has that, the comic books still have that stigma about yeah. them that it's not real reading. <laughs> when in the fact, it is. And exactly. It's, and it actually helps your kid just as much as reading any other book out there. So I just found that interesting, down 6%, um, just to rattle it, off. Well, it, I'll ask you. Yeah. So we'll go through like what the top selling comic books of the year were. I think that's important. People. They were all know. Marvel books. No, incorrect. What, what do you think was the number one highest selling book? Number one highest selling book? Last year. Yeah, 2018. Mm, Batman. You're close because that's number three, 412,000 copies. And that, of course, was the controversial, are they getting married? Are they not? Of course he doesn't, blah, blah, blah. Listen to the podcast for that one. Second, Spider-Man 800. Anniversary issue makes sense. Spider Man super popular, sold four hundred thirty nine thousand. Okay, so number one, Action Comics one thousand five hundred four thousand copies. My man, Superman. Now five hundred thousand copies is not a lot compared to what they used to sell in the millions. Right now five hundred thousand is a staggering amount because most books sell forty to sixty thousand. Um. But all three of these titles, it's interesting to note, had like a million and one variants. So they had True. numerous covers. They all had store variants. So you might have so, had 100,000 people buy these, probably less. Because if you bought these books, you probably bought like 10 covers of it. So you might have had only like 50,000 people actually buy Action Comics, but they bought all 10 covers. I think that happens to more people than only buy one. Probably. I think it's safe to and say I, there's less than 100,000 customers for all of these titles. I, I I could see that. And again, the variant boosts the sales. So, And you're including the variants in the sales. So, Correct. You know, I, I don't know. And it, it, I think it still comes down to marketing as well. You don't hear marketing for comic books at all. Nobody, it's like just, oh, it's America. We have comic books. Go to your comic book shop. It's like you kind of have it ingrained in your head, I guess, but, and parents pass it down to their kids, but there's no other way to know that there's comics. I also find it funny that all three of these comics were books that people absolutely hated. So Action <laughs> Comics has never been popular. People are kind of annoyed with it. It was, a, I think, a $10 title. Nobody really had interest in it. Spider-Man 800 was hated because of the whole Red Goblin situation where he was just a mashup of characters. Then he wasn't even of any significance. They just killed him off and it's like, done with that. The spec value died. Everyone was pissed. And then, of course, the Batman, the Batman 50 fiasco. thing, the, the wedding fiasco. So it was like, everybody hated these books, but they're the three most popular selling. <laughs> and I'm all for a good wedding fiasco, but this was fucking bad. <laughs> yeah. It just... So just some of the other quick stats. Um, out of the top 100 for the year, Marvel had 48 of them. Okay. So DC actually outnumbered them. They had 49. So How did that happen? And Image had the other three. So all the other small independents, they couldn't even sniff the top 100. Image had three titles. And they're a pretty large company. Yeah. But with DC, Marvel, you know, 49 to 48, you would think the top 10 might be pretty close. And we said two of the top three were DC. But Marvel actually had seven out of the top ten titles. So they're dominating on the upper right. parts of the, the chart. DC's kind of got the 50 to the 100 part. Yeah, spin it any way you want, though. Yeah. And just to let people know, Image, their top-selling title, not Walking Dead, uh, not the other Kirkman one that we reviewed. What the hell is the name of that? The one that's so bad I forgot about yeah, it. Yeah, we don't remember. Magic Order. 158,000 copies. So that was Image's number one selling title. Hmm. So about a third of what, you know, Batman was doing. That's all I had in comics. I just thought, hey, stats came out this month. That's pretty interesting. Big part of what we talk about. Yeah, it's an interesting take, man. Like, and now if these movies die off, say we're foreshadowing, like we just said earlier. Comic sales slump again? 
I, they would have to. I, I, somebody has to be buying these books based on the movie. Somebody. I I agree, but I don't think that's a major selling point. I yeah, really o- don't. Obviously not. I, yeah, I really don't think so. But if the movies do go away, we might see like a 12% dip instead well, of 6%. And the movies have no bearing. Look, action was the number one. There's no Superman movie. All right? Everybody hates the DC movies. Yeah. So why are Superman and Batman that big? Because they're icons. Icons. Because <laughs> they're icons, like pecans. <laughs> it's it's just weird. I mean, the main contributor, I think, to sales slumping. Titles are way too heavily priced. Four dollars for a new books a lot. It's fucking ridiculous. You barely get anything to read in it. It's all ads, and the constant renumbering. No, yeah, people are losing. It's, it's jumping off points, not jumping on points. Yeah, and it's. Like it's rebooting, it's the renumbering, it's the retelling of the same effing story all the time, you know. It, but what else are you gonna do? Has all the stories been have all the stories been told? I don't know, gotta be something new, yeah. So, the only thing I have for toy news this week is I just wanted to make fun of Star Wars, gotta do that, of course. Because you hate, you hate Star Wars. <laughs> you hate it, but you collect it. It was just like a sad state of affairs. So Entertainment Earth did this funny thing for Valentine's Day where you could buy 12 roses for $20. And the roses were the Black Series figures from Star Wars. You know, Those are the long stems, right? The six-inch figures? The six-inch figure, figures they called, yeah, like the regular roses. Then they did a short stem rose <laughs> sale, which were the three and three-quarter inch, also for 20 bucks. It is funny. It's hilarious, but it's like, what sad state of affair is Star Wars in that it's basically buy one, get 11 free yeah. because they're $20 figures. I don't know, Buy one, get 11. But and I'm like thinking in my head, how did they think this toy would sell? Let's face it. It's a fat Asian chick. Normal the, human. You realize no you- kid wants to play with just some chubby girl. Let's give him a monster. Give him a creature, a droid, something cool. It's just a regular chubby old person. You reali- they can look at their mom for that. Oh my God. You realize right now what you just said is the whole reason why she jumped off of social media and had that whole. That's thing. the other reason people won't buy her toy. She obviously is like can't get over the fact she just sucks. The movie itself is terrible. She's she a sucks. terrible character. I don't think she sucks. I don't think the actress sucks as a person. Not as a person, just as a character. The character, but she is just character, a character. It's so just a Star Wars it. character. Was it? A, She's a baby. Oh, oh! I get paid a million dollars to be in this movie that everybody knows, and then I'm gonna cry about it when there's backlash. Uh, yeah, put me in a movie. I'll fucking live it up. I'll tweet back and be like, "Yeah, hate on bitches." Teach their own. I don't know. It's just, it's pathetic that Hasbro thought this figure would even sell. Like, this is well, not a surprise. She was more of a, not a major, major character, but she was throughout the movie. To not make a figure of her, I, I can see why they made a figure of her. Could you pack All her, right? like, one per case instead of, like, four or five well, yeah. per case? But that's a whole Hasbro issue in and of itself. That, and I don't, we've talked about this and stomped this into the ground how many fucking times. Hasbro sucks, okay? They don't know what the fuck they're doing. They are helping kill the Star Wars image as well. I don't know why Disney just doesn't give them the middle finger. But they don't put any and characters into movies anymore. Like, talk about the original. You had Chewbacca. You had R2. More. You had 3PO. You had Yoda. You had Vader. They weren't humans. Yeah, you need a human to they carry the movie. Humanoid. They were humanoid to keep that human aspect you can identify with. They're cooler than Finn, yeah. Ray. Asian they have girl. a lot of people. But then, again, it's maybe some people Boring. think, are you doing it just for the sake of doing it? Are you having aliens just for the sake of having aliens? Obviously, that's what sells. That's what kids want. Uh, play with an alien. I don't want to play with some lady I saw at the grocery store. Well, maybe you do. <laughs> <laughs> She's hot, you do. I don't even know what to say. All right, so I guess our personal adventures this week. You went to local Comic Con. Yeah, you went. How was last it? Last time, um, it was good. It was good, man. 
Was it better than the last time you went? I really enjoyed it the last time. You're like, no way, that show's fucking shit, and there can't it's, be that. <laughs> it still is half shit, honestly. It is. It's too much cosplay crap. I don't get the cosplay thing. I really don't, okay? If you're into it, that's cool. But there is a lot of cosplay at this thing, and I don't understand why. I really don't understand how this small show, it, they outnumber, I think, everybody else. <laughs> Everybody's bad. in fucking costume. And I'm like, did you do it just to get a dollar off? You know? I don't know. But um, the crap that's there, it's still there. Okay? The flea market guy, still there. A flea market guy sitting behind his table at one point. I was there until about 15 minutes before it closed. Uh, I noticed he's sitting in the aisle in his chair, just lounging out in the <laughs> aisle in front of his fucking table. And I'm like, that's a great way for people to go look at your books. So he wasn't the, packing up. He what was time just sitting did, there. What time did you get there? I got there about one o'clock. Oh, okay. Yeah. A little after one, there was a little bit of a line. Okay. Because I thought you said you were getting there at 10. I was like, damn, you put in all, all day digging. No, man. no, 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 I didn't leave till uh, early afternoon. So I got there about one o'clock, uh, a little bit after, waited in line. And it was just like, how complicated can it be to pay? <laughs> but it's such a hick show to begin with. Well, people can't you know? get their money out of their wallet. It's like, you know how much it costs? Can you have it ready? Just hand it to the fucking yeah, lady. I have cash and my $1 off coupon because I am that stingy. <laughs> I'm not dressing in costume for a dollar off, but I have a card because they mail you a coupon. I have it ready. It's not that hard, people. No, and that, but the, the other thing that slows them down is they have raffles. Write down your name to get on our mailing list and, you know, end of the day raffle. I don't even care. You give away nothing that I could possibly want. Okay. It's probably some manga book or whatever. I don't care about it. But the 50 cent shit show is there. I found four books there. Last time I dug, I, I, I was looking for new stuff. I was looking for some, like, Red Sonia, uh, Jenny Frieson books and some Lucio Perillo books. And I'm like, oh, I didn't pull those out of there the last time I've looked. So maybe they have them. They didn't have anything. But as you're looking, you obviously would pull anything else of spec yeah. value. It is uh, such fucking junk. I mean, I went is. through, what, like 100 long boxes for I maybe pulled eight books. The, I, I revert, They weren't a value. I reversed my strategy. I went looking at the two, three, five, ten dollar books first. And I did my, I perused around, you know, because I don't want to blow all my money in one spot. So I said, you know what? I'm going to go, I'm not, might not buy quantity, but I'm going to buy cool shit that I want. And uh, I put the pictures up on Facebook of what I got. So I got some, you know, cool 12 cent world's finest and some action comics, 15 centers and shit. A guy cut me a deal on some of them. And you know, these are, these are books you're not going to find in a 50 cent bin. You're not going to find them in the dollar bin. You know, I'm getting to the point of, well, these are cool. These are, nobody's going to have these. So even if they're not in the best of condition, if they're still 6.5, I'm going to buy them because that's going to be really good 20 years down the road, you know? So it was cool to find that stuff. I found a bunch of Star Wars shit that I didn't have. So was the Bronze Age guy there selling like two and three dollar Bronze Age books? Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's pretty, he had good shit. Yeah, and there was a lot of you know uh, three dollar, three dollars a book, you know, or four for ten yeah. kind of deal. Uh, you know, half off stuff. Of course, there were some people that were just totally overpriced, <laughs> and you're just like f you, you know. One guy just sitting on his cell phone. Oh, and reception there is a little spotty in places. And he's like, oh, I keep dropping the call. And he's just sitting there. Typical comic book guy, gut hanging out of the shirt and everything. But overall, decent because I got cool shit. You know, I don't didn't overpay. But deals, you know, I didn't get great deals. But I got what I wanted. And it was a decent price. So... Average book, I probably paid three bucks a pop for, and I got what you see on the, on the Facebook page. So go to our Facebook page and see what I got. So you're not a wall book shopper. No. But did you notice, like, what was hot on the wall? Was anyone selling, like, Captain Marvel stuff? Hey, that's super popular. Like, was there anything consistent? Like, that book is everywhere. No. No. Hmm. 
There was nothing consistent. Now, the 50 Cent bin people, they have books behind them. Almost everything was Marvel. Like, 90% of what they had up there was Marvel. So I'm not interested in that. Um, Everybody else, no. Did you get to talk to our boy, Ollie? No. Was um, he there? He was there. And I, he was right in the door when I walked in. And his, his booth was mobbed at first. So I was like, all right. And I was going to walk around. And then I didn't see him again. <laughs> I know he was there. So they, were they had new dollar books at least? Did you pull no, anything from there? All they had was Marvel starting at G through Z, I think. It was bizarre. Oh, it was probably their crap from the store, huh? Like yeah, the, the reds. reds. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's junk. You didn't, it's not that even was worth it. going through. That was, I, didn't, I just kind of looked because I knew the other guy that was working the, the stand with them. And uh, I was like... Uh, what you got going on here? He's like, oh, Marvel, G through Z or whatever, or W. I might not even know all the way through the alphabet. It, it was nothing. I was like, oh, I'm like, well, I don't, nothing here. It was all new, new shit. So Ugh, it was just like. The worst. It was garbage. It really was. So that's, that's disappointing. Yeah. Um, you know, but the uh, good place for comic books. It is a good show for comics. Yeah, it's pretty much all there is there. Yeah. Now, the last time I went, it's been a year since I went because I was so pissed off the last time. And, you know, I reevaluated what I'm going to go shopping for. So it's a more pleasurable experience for me. I, you know, I was like looking through and because I was spending a little bit more money, I was a little bit more, you know, uh, conscious of what I was going to buy, you know. Well, I think it's like if you go in the mindset of you're always going to dig, it's always going to be the same old fucking yes. books left over. Yes. And then therefore you're thinking, the show is shit because you never find anything, but it's you're digging through boxes that have been dug right. a million times. But you so always you, hope you you're going to find that one. Right. But, I mean, <laughs> and there's always something new that gets hot, like Reborn or something. It gets hot, and now you want it. But that's so few and far between. It, there does get to a point where it's like, all right, I'm going to look through the $10 boxes because there's just nothing else. And it makes a whole different experience. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to go there and say you wanted to spend 60 bucks on these 50-cent books, okay? You can walk out with obviously a shit ton of books, and I've done that before. But they were, we've been picking this for how many years? Yeah, they're not really replenishing it, you know, much. I noticed a little bit, or at least not good enough to waste your time digging through no. the hundred to find the no. hundred boxes to find ten books that you did want. And you know, rebirth stuff is starting to show up in dollar bins. There was only like, I think I saw four rebirth issues of anything in this 50 cent bin that should be in there left and right honestly yeah so we went to a store what two weeks ago yes two weeks ago local shop and um they had 160 long boxes yeah well i didn't even go through them all i I went through them all (laughs) i couldn't i did not have enough time i was always like show me however many boxes an endless sea i will dig through them all i will say after the 160 my fucking fingers were ready to fall off my shoulders hurt from like (laughs) Reaching out, you know, at the back of the boxes. And they were packed so tight, you're kind of like, it's hard to dig through. I was tired at the end. I felt like I worked. You know, I was like, I just put it, I was there four hours. I'm like, I put a four-hour shift in, fucking standing here digging books. But to your point, it was a tons of Rebirth. Every yeah. title oh, you yeah. wanted, Rebirth. Yeah. So it's just amazing that shit's already in the dollar bins. And you went the night before. You went on a Friday night. I went the next day, Saturday. I spent like two hours there. I had other shit to do. And I was just like, I knew what I wanted. You know, I was looking through stuff. There was so much rebirth, man. That's, That's a lot. It, and I'm like, if it was, how many people were there Friday night? Was there a lot of people? There was like 20 people digging, yeah. My thought is, if that many, because I think you told me there was a bunch there. If that many people went through these boxes and that rebirth is still there, I can go there in three weeks, that rebirth is still going to be there if I need it. There was a couple issues I pulled from rebirth. Like, they had the um, uh, Harley Quinn Joker book, you know, the classic thing where he's standing behind her. Mm -hmm. There is a Suicide Squad 16 was homage to that. That's, you know, a $30 book I pulled, but most of, 99% of rebirth is not really worth much. So those type of books would be gone. But if you're looking to put runs together, yeah, you're going to be able to find them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it's always fun to fill out your runs and to find that gem. So I was there. I found some $10 books here and there. Yeah, I I got a couple $50 books. I got like a Death of Flash. But overall, it was mostly run fillers. I got maybe like 100-some books. I didn't even get that many there. Honestly, it wasn't worth the amount of time digging. 
I, I do much better at the other honey hole where he just is an idiot and knows nothing. Because I, I could tell at this door, I would dig through the box and I'd be like, well, issue yes. 10 should be the good yeah. one. Oh, 9, 11. Fuck. Yeah. And then I dig through thing, another man. title. Oh, issue 15 <laughs> if it's here. 14, 16. Fuck. Don't you hate that? They knew what they were doing yeah. before they put the stuff out. Dude, even Chucky's, second and Charles, we used to hit that. You would find the whole run except for that key issue. You're like, fuck, they actually went through it. <laughs> Every once in a while. They, they're pretty stupid. They are too. But <laughs> for a while, it's just like, you know, so, or someone else cherry picked it. Yeah, too, they but, are probably. But this place, you could tell oh, yeah. it was picked before These guys went know, through. And they're a legit shop. So. Yeah. But uh, yeah, t- you know, Lehigh Valley Comic Con. I had a good time as far as getting what I wanted. Uh, the aggravating shit, the cosplay. Okay. Sorry, cosplayers. It just aggravates me. Why? I'm getting sick and tired of getting hit with shit. Keep your fucking props to a minimum, all right? <laughs> you know this. Was the Joker guy there? Of course he was. <laughs> of course he was. He was. Did you get an interview? No. Oh, you no, bastard. I didn't. I didn't do any interviews. I was going to, and then I was like, nah. I just, I was so annoyed. And like, <laughs> they have like this whole quote artist alley thing in. I don't understand what silver jewelry of like that you can find at any flea market is doing there. I don't get it. I'm just right up there with fucking swords and gutter guards. Was the guy from Philly there on the back wall? Was there like a huge wall book guy on the very back wall? He always has what? really good shit, but he's only ever been at that show once. Well, uh, younger or older? He's like in his like 50s baseball hat. He always wears a baseball hat. Back wall. No. no, he was there last time. I got some really good shit from no. him. He does Philadelphia shows. I was curious. Now, like, now that was the big comic book guy. <laughs> so I'm glad I didn't go then, man, because that's all I would have really no, went for. And I wasn't looking for anything this time. I, yeah, no, I I think you would have still found stuff. I could always find a book. Yeah, but. no, but I mean, like, there were wall books that I'm sure you would want there. I'm sure you would have found something. Well, that goes for any show, but I don't you know, need but to go deals, there for that. No, I, I think you still would have had just as good of a time going this one as the one you did before. It would not have changed for you at all. All right. I can save my money. I got Chiller coming up, and the uh, the strangers are going to be there. So I got to save save up by the mask, get those signed, got a poster coming. So you got to get it signed by the guy that's man in the mask. That's right. You you hope he's going to sign it, Man in the Mask? Yes. Yep. Dumb name, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the Man in the Mask. <laughs> so, yeah. I got to go. I was uh, saving my money for that, but... Cool. At cool. least he got something good. Yeah. Yeah. You know. So, yeah. Well, plus I'm starting my vinyl collection, so <laughs> that's like, hmm. It's just nothing to do with being a nerd. Well... I am, I am nerding out about kind it of. because I am putting them in plastic sleeves. Like the, the covers are being protected by basically big comic book bags. The, uh, the inserts that the actual record is in, they're getting replaced with anti-static bags. So it, the comic nerd is moving into the vinyl collection nerd. But, uh, and you got to tell our listeners about your new collection of sorts yeah i'm going i'm going down this rabbit hole that's already too far too far gone too far you just started but it's been a lot in a week (laughs) (laughs) so i listened to this other podcast i'll give him a shout out uh tales from the flip side They're, they're basically a comic book podcast but since it's from the flip side they talk about like really anything else and they started talking about sports cards and how they were collecting it and they were kind of getting nostalgia over the old wax packs and stuff and i was a kid of the 80s and 90s every kid collected cards i used to buy them by the box too oh yeah no matter what it was a fun ripping them but i'm like i'm not really into those boxes because the players are fucking shit anymore there are millions of them out there i'm not really into new sports cards and they're so fucking expensive and then i'm like do you know what i want wax packs of like the old non-sports shit so I started looking on eBay, and it's like, oh, they got fucking Rocky cards and Jaws cards and He-Man and Ninja Turtles and, you know, all this stuff. I'm like, these are fucking awesome. And I'm just, like, trying to find something different to collect that not everybody has. 
some like an unopened box of like old non sports cards would be awesome. Like what? Well, I did order. I got a Gremlins two box. I posted up on the Facebook page, so it's awesome. It comes, you know, you get the full box, and you get the p- promotional poster inside, all the packs. You get the bubble gum still in it, and all this stuff. I'm not opening them, of course. You know, you get need the sealed box. But it's just like something about like that feel, you know. And then I'm thinking, I am these fucking losers on American Pickers. No, you're bigger. Because they're like they go to the store and they're like. I remember when my dad gave me a nickel. We would go to the gas station and he'd give me a nickel and I'd get that pop. And I just, today I need that cooler, that Coca-Cola cooler. I need it redone and I want the gas tank next to it because that's what I remember at the thrift store or whatever, gas station, you know. That's me at this point. I'm like, I remember going to the fucking corner store, getting the 50 cents, handing it to the lady. You get a fucking 10 cards a sticker and a piece of gum and he'd be the happiest kid in the world. He'd like look at the cards, put my sticker on my bike and I'm eating the gum as I drive home. Yeah. And you would look at those cards over and over and yeah. over. It was like weird. So there's something that's just like so nostalgic about it. Like I want these and I just, I just put them on like a little countertop display and I'm like, Oh, it's right back to the, those days. And then I started looking at, you know, I was like, Oh, maybe I'll get some X-Men card or something, but they're all newer. And they come in like the the foil packaging. Oh yeah, I don't like. I'm that. like, no. I'm not interested in these at all. They're, they suck. I want the gum, and I just want the old wax pack. So don't blame me, man. It sucks getting old, doesn't it? it? It's just like it's pretty pathetic. <laughs> That's awesome getting old. So I ordered that. I ordered uh, a Ninja Turtles Series One and Series Two box. Oh, nice. They'll be here next week, and I got a Jaws 3D box coming. So, Jaws 3D. Hell yeah! Really. I need the Jaws 2 box yet. Oh. I need a Rocky 2 and 4. And like the boxes are going for, most of them are like a hundred some dollars a piece. The Jaws 3D, you took it off for free, right? They, they Who the fuck wants that? Who doesn't if you're a Jaws fan? I love oh, Jaws. The worst fucking movie. So it's, and like, it's like, who has a Gremlins 2 sealed box? <laughs> Nobody. Dude, you're such a nerd. You're st- Nobody. It's like, I got one. Yeah, it was like, you know what? People are like, yeah, that's so cool. But then at the same time, it's like, that's cool, but okay. Why? Yeah, why? <laughs> what, what the fuck? <laughs> and then um, it, it all started, too, because I was, I got that Texas Chainsaw Massacre Hot Wheel. You know, it's the truck from yeah. the end of the movie. And I'm like, this is something cool. Like, not everyone's going to have that. Not every Chainsaw fan has that. It's like something different. And I'm like, what else could I get different? And then they start talking about these cards. I'm like, that's it? Epiphany? And I swear to God, like, you wish things into your life. So it's just my kid's birthday. My cousin sends a card. Inside the card is a sealed pack of the 89 Tops Batman. Nice. With the gum and shit. I'm like, you ain't opening that. That's what, <laughs> right to me. It's like, it's only a pack, but it's like, hey, I'll settle for a pack right now. Maybe I'll get a box later. And the thing about the, these cards is people sell just the empty boxes for like 10 or 15 bucks. So if somehow I can piece together and not like 36 packs to make a box, I could always just throw them in there and there you go. Man. Got a box. That's pretty neat. Something different for you. So my question to you is, you know, like the top of the box is a little bit perforated and you got to like pop it out and then you fold oh. the flap back so it stands up. So you got the pack showing and then the, the display. Mine, the perforation still attached. Do you break the perforation to have it as like an actual display or leave it as is? Leave it as is. That's what I'm doing. There's no way. If if it was <laughs> broken already, yes, by all means, display it. No. Perforate it? No. I want to display it so bad, though. You can't, man. But th- think about it this way. You're going to get others in your collection that are already broken. The perforation is broken. So you can display those. You know what I'm saying? So you might be put those in front. You know, so you do it by genre or whatever. So you have your tall ones in the back, the shorter ones in the front. You can't do it, dude. No. And then I'm like, you know, to get the cards in a set is not that expensive. They're only like 10 to $20 for a full set opened. So I'm like, I kind of do want to look at the cards. So now it's like, do I order the set plus the box? <laughs> So now I'm double dipping again. It's your Everything com- I fucking collect, a double dip. You, it's your completionist attitude, too. 
I thought, but, so I was always a rabbit hole. Like, I'm just going to end up collecting all these. And I'll have all the ones I want. And I'll be like, well, I could get all of the tops cards from 1985. <laughs> see, that's... <laughs> and it's Alf and A-Team and all the bullshit. It's like your McFarlane collection. Right. Like, I, see, like I could be the only one with a complete tops non-sports collection in the box. <laughs> That's what yeah. I'm afraid of. Well, my yeah. wife is also afraid of that. You have to exhibit self control. See, that's what I. That's weird. Two different collectors in that way, you know. Like I, I don't I collect would, enough toys, comics, movie posters, <laughs> masks. It is, it is <laughs> video games. It is different though. I like the different aspect of it, but dude, stick to what you. You don't need all the tops cards. I don't. I say this now. I don't. No, you don't. But I'm afraid I'll like eventually get to that point because then you turn into a tops fan <laughs> that's true and i'm not so therefore you just be fooling yourself i hope i don't go there the other interesting i thing, actually hope you do so <laughs> i get to hear the stories of how pissed off your wife is about this so i'm like fuck i missed out i got up in on that mork and mindy box motherfucker <laughs> you know like that'll be me one year from now on the podcast <laughs> But the interesting thing about these boxes is uh, most of them, if they didn't sell, you get them sent back to Tops, and they mark them with a grease marker, a big black X across the whole front of the box. And that was their way of knowing it was a return box, not a new one. Well, all of them that you buy now were return boxes because if they sold, yeah. they're gone. There is no box to sell. You know what I mean? The individual packs were sold, and they threw away the box at the end. So most of them have that grease marker on. But you can kind of scrape it off with your thumbnail and it comes off and you'll never know. And dealers will charge like a premium for an un X'd out box that they just happen to have, you know, somehow it was never sent back. They just kept it or they bought it fresh and kept it all these years. You can get like twice as much. Buy the fucking marked out box and just scrape it off and you're good as good as gold. Good tid tidbit of information there. That's what I'm doing. Fuck, pay half as much. So now you're going to justify that you can buy more because you save. <laughs> Probably. You save $50 or whatever, 25 bucks. That's right. And in the zombie apocalypse, I can rip the packs open and get nutrition from the gum. Dude, the gum just shatters in your mouth. It's pretty bad. <laughs> I ate it maybe like 15 years ago and it was unedible at that point. So I can only imagine it being 30 oh, yeah. years now. Yeah, I, I ate that shit when I was a kid. It's like Bazooka Joe too. Like whoever thought that Bazooka Joe was a good concept – Oh, let's get this little mini comic and your five cent piece of gum. You can't even chew the fucking thing. It's like a brick. <laughs> and it lo- you're like, you'd sit there going, arr, arr, arr. you're chewing on this thing. You got flavor for seven seconds. That <laughs> was that. it. And then you're like, it's gone. I, my five cents is gone. And you're left with this little wax paper comic that you put in your pants pocket. Your mom would yell at you because it went through the wash or they're all over the house. And looking at Nostalgia. this, looking at this rabbit hole, like when you look at just like sealed boxes of stuff, you'll find like the 1989 Batman candy bar mm. sealed in the box, 20 wrappers in it. You know, it's still cellophane over the top. Who saved that? It was like, I'm going to save this candy box. Like there was a Masters of the Universe box of candy. It was like $350. Why was there even He-Man candy? I don't know, but I kind of wanted it. <laughs> How much was it? Three hundred and fifty dollars. Who the fuck would waste their money on that? I don't. It was yeah. That's a little much. If it was a Star Wars box, would you buy it? Mm, of what candy? Yeah, you would uh, buy it. He's like, yeah, no, no. I'd rather do comics or something or a figure for that much. I would not buy that. Say it was like fifty bucks. Nineteen seventy eight Star Wars vintage Darth Vader fucking lollipops or something. Are the lollipops in the shape of Darth Vader's head? See, Are they the flat ones with like those little white, you know, like like the smiley face ones that had like the white, yeah, on the eyes and the mouth, yeah. or like the, the the pumpkin ones that had like the yep. if it was like flat, maybe fifty bucks. Think how much. And I was like starting to think of all this stupid shit. I'm like, imagine someone who has a WWF superstar wrestlers. You remember the um ice cream sandwiches on a stick with a had a wrestler imprinted on it uh no they had like macho man and ultimate warrior and like hulk hogan kind of rings a bell imagine getting a box of those sealed because you'd have to keep them frozen 
all this time. <laughs> so you'd had to have Dude, had them in your freezer thousands for of dollars, like, yeah, man. <laughs> 30 years. <laughs> you got to send them dry ice packed to wherever you're sending them to put them in your freezer and display them in your freezer as you open it up. Be like, yep, that's a 30 year old box of WWF superstars. You like open it up. <laughs> like, I can only open the freezer for three seconds. Otherwise, there's yeah. danger of the ice cream melting. Like, who, does anyone have a box of that sealed? If so, we want to interview you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, drop us a line. <laughs> That's all I got, man. It's just That's funny. You run out of stuff to collect, so you start something new. Do you really have to collect something new? I think as a collector, you'll always find a way to collect you always find something. something. You'll always find something. Like even an antique collector. Like, well, I'm done doing the, the gas station signs. I'm going to move on to... Street signs. Yeah. And then it's oil cans, and then it's fucking bicycles. You know... All those people on the show are the same way. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just different objects. Wow. I'm one of them, man. Good luck. I can't wait to hear. I, I hope I hear you yelling at work. Like, <laughs> Damn it. I missed out by four cents on this That's fucking band. Dick Tracy box. <laughs> motherfucker. Would you buy the Dick Tracy no, box? No, 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 no. I'm really you- keeping it down to like 10 things. 10 boxes. That's that's good. 10 tops. Tops, yes. No tops. pun intended. Top like ten tops. <laughs> yes. <laughs> ten maximum. Yes. Wow. I I could. I really want that Fright Flicks box, man. It's got Freddy on it. Ooh. Oh, I really want that. They're, they, I, hey, they're cool. They're not for me, but good luck, man. Thank I, you. I I wish you nothing but the best of luck, <laughs> but I do hope I hear how much trouble you are having because it makes me <laughs> laugh. <laughs> So hit us up on uh, Facebook. Look at what we're posting. I'm going to have the new YouTube videos up. Uh, dysfunctionalnerdcast at gmail.com. Yep. Twitter at dnerdcast. Josh and is killing it on there. Yeah. Try to do some uh, things every once in a while. Tweet out stuff. A lot of them are maybe my more personal opinions on things. But uh hey, let us know what you think. Uh, thank you to everybody new who is following us on Twitter. Uh, appreciate it, and uh, we'll be giving out some shout-outs to our new followers and stuff, too, and let you know that we uh, do appreciate it. And As always, hit us up with the five-star reviews on iTunes. So until next time, enjoy your finely aged Topps Bubblegum. Yeah.